Hello and welcome to this special service of reflection to mark the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when the sounds of war fell silent on this continent. A service was due to have taken place at St Paul's to mark this occasion, but due to the current coronavirus pandemic, sadly this is no longer possible. So we hope that with this short service of reflection, you will be able to mark this day by joining in with us all online. We come together today, conscious of our need for God's forgiveness, for the sin and the desire to dominate others that leads to conflict between people and war between nations. As we remember the many soldiers, sailors, airmen and civilians who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing tyranny, so we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. Poignantly, we meet online amid a time of national and international crisis, which has been likened to wartime. However, as we gather in this dispersed way, we do so glad of each other's virtual company and grateful for the laughter and the love that follows times of sadness and loss. Throughout today's service, words to the prayers and hymns will appear on your screen and we encourage you to join in with us at home. So let's pray as we begin our act of worship today. O Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us to hope. As we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, help us to make your future in this world until your kingdom comes. Amen. We're now going to listen to two readings. First is a speech given by Winston Churchill on VE Day, which is going to be read to us by David Ford. And second, our Bible reading from the Book of Romans, which is going to be read by Kirsty Hicks. Churchill and his principal colleagues appeared on the balcony of the Ministry of Health above the vast crowd that thronged Whitehall. When Churchill declared, declared, this is your victory, the crowd roared back, no, it is yours. He went on to say, God bless you all, this is your victory. It is the victory of the cause of freedom in every land. In all our long history, we have never been a greater day than this. Every man or woman has done their best. Everyone has tried, neither the long years, nor the dangers, nor the fierce attacks of the enemy have in any way weakened the independent resolve of the British nation. My dear friends, this is your honour. This is not a victory of a party or of any class. It's a victory of the great British nation as a whole. We were the first in this ancient land to draw the sword against tyranny. After a while, we were left all alone against the most tremendous military power that has ever been seen. We were all alone for a whole year. There we stood alone. Did anyone want to give in? No, came back the crowd. Were we downhearted? No. The lights went out and the bombs came down. But every man, woman and child in the country had no thought of quitting the struggle. London can take it. So we came back after long months from the jaws of death out of the mouth of hell while all the world wondered. When shall the reputation and faith of this generation of English men and, women, men and women fail? I say that in the long years to come, not only will the people of the island, but of the world, whenever the bird of freedom chirps in human hearts, look back to what we've done and they will say, do not despair, do not yield to violence and tyranny, march straight forward and die, if need be, unconquered. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we face death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god that is in jesus christ our lord so i'm now very pleased to welcome uh, tanya short from shadwell methodist church who is going to lead us in our reflection today we know that for many many centuries people have used stones and rocks to help them remember those who have died when we visit churches we often see stones or plaques inside them some churches have graveyards and all villages and towns have cemeteries that are filled with memorials many places have war memorials that have on them names of people that have been killed during the first and second world war perhaps you have even made a pilgrimage to the war graves in france belgium or even further afield some places have memorials to people who have died in earlier or subsequent conflicts the national memorial arboretum in staffordshire is a large area where trees and shrubs grow and has a huge stone memorial which records the names of all British service personnel who have been killed since 1945. Stones serve as good reminders of things that have happened. They are strong and sturdy and do not readily break or rot away. Human beings have used memorial stones for a long, long time. They were not necessarily gravestones as we know them in cemeteries today with names and dates carved into them. Sometimes people simply made a rough pile of stones, which we often call a cairn. And in the Bible, we read of people who set up memorial stones. In, Gen in Genesis, we read about Jacob setting up a stone as a memorial to his dream about a ladder into heaven. Sometimes they created something uh, a bit more elaborate out of just a few larger stones, an altar, a place of offering or sacrifice. In the Old Testament, you can read how Noah Abraham, Isaac and Moses all built altars and in each case we are told that the altars were built in response to what the Lord had done. Eventually a huge temple was built in Jerusalem as a place in which people could celebrate what the Lord had done for them. When Jesus came he gave his followers a special way to remember him, the Last Supper. And we can read in Corinthians in the Bible that Paul tells us that Jesus said, do this to remember me. Words we hear when we take communion. In many church buildings, we have a special place around which people gather to celebrate again this last supper sometimes it is wooden and sometimes it's made of stone and sometimes people call it an altar but we need ways to remember people too it is important that no life should be forgotten and stones can help us and as we know every november on remembrance sunday in britain we use poppies to help us recall those who died in conflicts. It might be hard to understand the point of wearing a poppy 
or what difference two minutes silence will make when we could be shouting protests, marching to stop wars. But in the silence, we can recognize a broken life being valued, a gift being given, and time to reflect on how much we have. But we also use stones. And in November, people frequently gather at war memorials because coming together is important. Being together shows that we support one another and the stones give us a place to gather around. And in November, as the poppy wreaths are laid at war memorials, it renews our remembrance so that the stone is not overlooked or forgotten. And today, as we gather, yes, it's in a different way, but we gather to mark the 75th anniversary of VE Day. We pay tribute to the service and sacrifice of the entire Second World War generation. We honour the men and women who have served in the military, from British, Commonwealth and Allied forces, to evacuees and those who served on the home front. As we face some of the most challenging times since the end of the Second World War, now more than ever, it is important to unite in recognition of service to the nation, just as communities did 75 years ago. There are many parallels between the struggles of the Second World War and what we're going through just at this time. And we look to our Second World War generation to learn from their experiences. And we continue our work to protect them from the threat that we currently face. We also honour those who have died for the cause of freedom. It is a time for us to say thank you for the sacrifices that they have made. It is a time to think about the freedoms we enjoy because they were willing to serve. It is a time to think about love, the love that they showed for their country and for their fellow man. It is a time to act about love, a time when we can show our love to them, to all those who have made sacrifices so we can have freedom. And during this pandemic, we can remember and give acts of love and thank yous by shopping, telephoning, letter writing, and being a good neighbour and a good friend. I'd like to close with this short reflection. History can inspire or trap. Walls can protect or divide. Words can engage or inflame. Power can free or destroy. Touch can comfort or violate. Peace can be shared or withheld. Gracious God, on this 75th anniversary of VE Day, when we remember past conflicts, we pray for the divided peoples of the world, that leaders, governments, and each one of us may use our resources, our opportunities, and our lives in the service of reconciliation for the sake of future generations and to the glory of your name. Amen. So let us pray.
Peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of freedom, justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation, that they may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we come now to our act of commitment. So let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. So we say together, Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit. Give us wisdom. Give us courage. Give us hope. And keep us faithful, now and always. Amen. So let's sing together our hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
So let's end with a blessing. So God grants to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and to all people, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen.